was Jesus based on the Egyptian god Serapis. Many mysticists doubt Jesus ever existed and believe he was copied from the Greek and Egyptian god Serapis because Serapis was called the Good Shepherd. He was considered a healer and a miracle worker. Christianity took the Serapin practices of using lights, bells, processions, and music. They look identical in depictions. Serapis was a sacrificial bull and Christ was a sacrificial lamb. He was annually sacrificed for the sins of Egypt. And there is a letter from the Emperor Hadrian which says the worshippers of Serapis were called Christians and had bishops of Christ. So with that, do we have evidence Jesus was a copy of the god Serapis? Well, not really, and the scholarship behind this reveals this is all nonsense. First, I can find absolutely no evidence in ancient records Serapis was ever called the Good Shepherd. The second one, of course, is too general since all deities are said to do this. The third one has no evidence of any direct connections. Using things like music and lights were used for almost all deities, and this is far too general. We have no evidence that Christian usage of these things was identical to the worship of Serapis. So unless we can get any details which show identical worship or direct dependence, this one has no evidence. To claim they look identical is absurd. Almost all men of that period had similar hair and beards, mainly because that was the customary way for men to look, and they didn't have cheap razors you could buy at the grocery store. Only the wealthy Roman elite could afford to keep themselves clean shaven. By this logic, almost every man must be a copy of Serapis if he has a beard. Since a lamb and a bull have no real connection, the issue is over whether or not they are both sacrificed in the same way, and the evidence shows this is nonsense as well. Jesus was willingly sacrificed for the sins of the world, whereas Serapis had nothing like this. In truth, Serapis was a blended deity, the combination of Osiris and Apis. Apis was a sacred bull, worshipped in Memphis, who was said to have died and then in the underworld became one with Osiris to become Osarapis, which was Serapis in the Hellenistic period of Egypt. This is nothing like the story of Jesus, and vague similarities don't cut it. The next one is strange. Jesus was not annually sacrificed. I think mysticists are confusing the celebration of Easter, where we remember Jesus' victory over sin and death, and assuming it is where Jesus has to die again every year. This is an absolutely ridiculous way to look at Christianity, and it is a joke to assume this is remotely true. The final one is the most used to argue for myth borrowing. People like Ray Hagens and Robert Taylor will claim there is an early letter written by the Emperor Hadrian, which says a group in Egypt called themselves Christians and worshipped Serapis. They claim this is clear evidence Christianity evolved from Serapis worship. However, there are so many problems with this supposed letter. First, even if the letter was legitimate, it would date to 134 AD, which is long after Christianity started, and it is equally likely Serapis worshippers borrowed from Christians who were spreading the gospel in that region. We already know Serapis worshippers were prone to syncretism, so if the letter was authentic, it would be more likely the Serapis cult borrowed from Christians. However, the letter is most likely a forgery, and that is how most scholars recognize it. The letter is found in a late 4th century collection of forged biographies called the Historia Augusta. The reason scholars think this is because it is filled with anachronisms, and it is pretty obvious in the Serapis letter itself. Hadrian was only in Egypt in 130 AD, however it mentions his adopted son, who Hadrian did not accept until 136 AD. It also mentions Servanius as consul, but he did not receive the position until 134 AD. This is why even the most liberal scholars, like Walter Baer, reject the authenticity of this letter. Glanwill Bowersock says, The presence of fiction in the Historia Augusta is by now an established fact. The mischievous author of this work pretended, as we all know, to be writing historical biographies. But this pretense, though compelling the inclusion of genuine historical material, imposed no perceptible limits on his wit and invention. So since that is the case, there is no evidence Jesus was just a myth based on Serapis.